Echo, Echo November, phone.com. Fiend Phone, I never knew remote audio could be this good. So the phone rings, and I pick it up, and it's Mark. And Mark says to me, hey, third Sunday, June, Father's Day, I ordered. Hey guys, Mark Clare here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar. That's right, every Monday to Friday, we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. You can help new minds find liberty. Chip in at lrn.fm. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, June 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.86 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,177 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports before the Islamic State had formally split from Al-Qaeda, there was talk about good Al-Qaeda versus bad Al-Qaeda in Syria, centering around the Islamic State as the more extreme group and Jabhat al-Nusra as the slightly less extreme group. That sort of talk died on the vine as Nusra lost fight after fight to the Islamic State and became less relevant. Now, with Al-Qaeda taking much of the Idlib province and setting up a little statelet of their own, there is a new push in the U.S. to endorse them as new allies against the Islamic State. It's the Hitler v. Stalin thing all over again, and hawks, desperate for a successful ally on the ground in Syria, are desperately trying to rebrand Al-Qaeda, of all groups, as the lesser of two evils, and hoping to repair the terrorist group's image domestically, which is still considerably tarnished after 9-11. Can it really work, though? After over a decade of war against Al-Qaeda, and with no intervening period of calm, it is hard to imagine that the administration, or any Anyone else is going to be able to sell a de facto alliance with Al-Qaeda as the lesser of two anythings, let alone a plan for winning Syria. Underscoring exactly what a tough sell this is going to be, Al-Qaeda is on the warpath in its newly conquered territory, attacking a Druze village and killing at least 20 civilians there. Attacks on religious minorities are every bit as common in Al-Qaeda as they are in the Islamic State Caliphate, and that reflects the reality that Jabhat al-Nusra is the same old Al-Qaeda. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, China's officially appointed head of Tibetan Buddhism said he supported the unity of the People's Republic and that he would align Tibet with the standards of the Chinese Communist Party. Gyaltsen Norbu, denounced as a fake by many Tibetans, is officially atheist. The pro-Beijing appointee, nonetheless, was selected as the 11th Panchen Lama in 1995 during Beijing's bid to win favor with Tibetans. Tibet's spiritual leader in exile, the Dalai Lama, had independently selected his own successor, a six year-old who was disappeared after Chinese authorities had him detained. Voice of America reports that the whereabouts of the boy who vanished 20 years ago are not known. Chinese state media reported during a meeting with Chinese President Xi on Wednesday, the 11th Panchen Lama presented a hada to the leader. Xi met with the Beijing-appointed Tibetan youth to reiterate the importance of China's diverse ethnic groups in hopes of actively integrating Tibetans into China's fast-driven development. China incorporated 
Tibet into the country 50 years ago and has called the Buddhist kingdom the Tibet Autonomous Region since annexation. The 11th Panchen Lama's predecessor spent more than a decade in prison or under house arrest for his criticism of China's central government. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports government officials in North Carolina can refuse to perform same-sex marriages by citing religious objections under a new law enacted on Thursday by the Republican-led legislature, which voted to override the governor's veto. The law protects the jobs of magistrates and other officials who refuse to perform marriages of same-sex couples by citing a sincerely held religious objection. Governor Pat McCrory, also a Republican, had said the officials who swore to defend the Constitution and perform their duties of office should not be examined exempt from upholding their oaths. The State House of Representatives overrode the veto by reaching a three-fifths majority of 69 to 41. Utah approved a similar opt-out law earlier this year. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The producers of Sesame Street have responded to the controversy over the recent New Yorker cover that showed Bert and Ernie as a gay couple celebrating the repeal of DOMA. Sesame Workshop released a statement today saying, quote, We have never viewed Bert and Ernie as a gay couple, but as two friends who will do absolutely anything to get their rocks off. These pansexual perverts cannot be categorized in your narrow gay, straight, or bisexual paradigm. They're into some pretty sick sh on their website, PBS released a long list of the duo's strange sexual fetishes, which range from shoving ice into their anuses so that they can sh cold water into women's mouths, to castrating stray dogs and then masturbating onto the animal's bleeding wounds. Although they're flattered that fans have turned the characters into gay icons, the producers explained that calling them gay would be inaccurate. Quote, they will literally f anything that moves. The producers also added that Oscar the Grouch is neither male nor female, and that its trash can is designed to hide a lower body that is just a Lovecraftian monstrosity of hundreds of interlocking penises and vaginas. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever is on your mind. 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. Ian and Mark still on the road, although Mark is generally off on Fridays, but he's with Ian. They're on the road. They were down in New York City for the Talkers Convention. They will be getting back sometime in the wee hours of the morning in studio tonight. It's Daryl. Chris. And Danica. And that Chris is not the same Chris that you have heard on Free Talk Live before. This is a new Chris. Uh, I knew Chris. Hi. Chris, you moved to New Hampshire last year? Last year, last February. And you dipped your toes into the political waters a little bit last year <laughs> in yes, a uh, run for sheriff that unfortunately was not successful on more than one front. Uh, you were not the sheriff of Nottingham or of Cheshire County, and you also were not successful in getting on the ballot. That was the big one. Yep. Can't win if you're not on the ballot. Yeah, and we can you know possibly delve into that a little bit later, uh, as well as, Chris, you've got an interesting story about someone who apparently did some sort of ethnicity reassignment surgery. And Danica, you've got something about six ways that we teach our children socialism. And we're going to start off with the ethnicity changing thing. So what what's this thing about? It's kind of interesting because I got a lot of friends in Idaho and Washington State. I'm originally from the West and in essence, the um, head of the Spokane, Washington, NAACP, is a girl named Rachel Dolazar. 
and she's been active in the NAACP. A lot of people describe her as sort of the face of uh, civil rights in eastern Washington state. And there's been some question, and I guess it was confirmed by her parents, as to what her actual race is. Okay, so I'm looking at a picture of this woman here. And she appears to maybe be, like, part Hispanic? She claims that she is African-American. Okay. So, what? what's the story here? She's not actually black? She's not Hispanic? She's not actually black. She's not actually Hispanic. I think she may have some American Indian in her family. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. She's kind of made up this persona, um, and her parents confirmed it today. They said she's a great actress. She can pretty much play whoever she wants to play. Okay. So you've got a news story from KXLY that probably has a little more info. So jump into that a little bit. Sure. Uh, the city of Spokane announced Thursday, it's investigating whether the president of the Spokane chapter of the NAACP violated the city's code of ethics in her application to serve on the Citizen Police Ombudsman Commission. That's where this stuff kind of blew up when she um, put on her application that she was indeed African American. Okay, so she's the head of some private organization, decides that she wants some spot on some government organization and basically put down what is presumably false information? That would be correct. Okay. Uh, and it was kind of interesting. There were some, some videos of her and a reporter pretty much came up to her and just said, is this a picture of your father? Because there's a picture that she often... Um, hands around that that shows her standing next to this uh, African-American gentleman, and she refers to him as his father, as her father. Um, he asked her point blank, or is, is this your dad? Yes, where are you going with this? Uh, are you really African-American? At which point she pretty much tore off her mic and walked off. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. pretty much the one thing that you never do is you never, like, remove a mic mid interview you never get up and storm off set because then you don't really get to give your point of view anymore because you're gone yeah and they that it doesn't matter what happened before you got up and walked away no the news story is that you got up and walked away in this case there were other things that happened that that basically made the news story become even more of a news story. That was the big one. And, of course, once the local news gets a hold of a story like this, then Facebook takes it the rest of the way, and it was blowing up all over my, my feed today. Um, yeah, the actual exchange went, uh, Ma'am, I was wondering if your dad really is an African-American man, Humphrey said. I don't understand the question, Dolazar answered. I That's did- not a difficult question. <laughs> See, when I initially saw this on my newsfeed, I was thinking, oh, someone's just trying to troll everybody. But wow, it, this woman is, has been passing herself off as a completely different race. This is really interesting. Yeah. Now, yeah. He, here's the question. How different is this from the senator from our neighbor to the south, Taxachusetts, who put down on some application that she was Native American to get some professor job, and then she taught, like, one class and got $400,000 or something. So how different is this? Is this woman's father actually a black man? No. No. Okay, so she's as white as you and me, presumably? Uh, German and English? I'd have to refer back to uh, And she does have article. some Native American, but I mean, you, you, we, okay, we, everybody so, can have Native American, but still not look Native American. Right, so she's as white as any of us in the room. Sure. Her, her parents put out some pictures that pretty much look like a Barbie doll. She's blonde hair and pale skin and yeah. Right, so I, I guess the next question becomes, 
if someone can change their gender and that's a completely accepted thing, then can someone change their ethnicity? Well, that was the big question in in what I saw in, in a bunch of different memes. It was Bruce Jenner. It was Michael Jackson. You know, okay, he's he's kind of went the other direction with all this. Uh, and then you have this girl. I guess, I guess the difference to me is a question of honesty. Are you being honest with what you're doing or are you trying to deceive people or not? I don't think there's any question that Caitlyn Jenner's being pretty straightforward with this, whatever her motives may be. Sure, absolutely. Right. So I, I guess this is one of those questions of how do you determine motives? Yeah. And I, I honestly, with this one, I don't know. And her parents don't seem to understand either. It was just she grew up in a family that they had um, uh, adopted children that were black. And maybe she just sort of identified with that race, and and that's what she wanted to be when she grew up. I don't know, but it's interesting. Danica, you got any thoughts on this about like how do you determine whether or not somebody has you know quote unquote pure motives for wanting sure. to make a change like this? Well, and that opens up another series of arguments about it because, if, for example, transgender. Some people feel that they oh they were they were born this way. You know, I was born to be attracted to men. I was born to be attracted to women. And then, you know, taking that just perspective with races is, you know, oh I feel like I was born the wrong skin color. I should have been born, I I should have been born black, or African American. Uh, but but then but then you've got, you know, genetics makes a play into this. Are you saying genetics also has? a way of making you be attracted to either sex as the way that it does making you have, you know, pale skin oh, or trans genetics. Skin. I thought you said Gen X and I was like, no, what no, no, do, no, 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 people that are between like, you know, 35 no, 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 and 50 no, no. have to do with any of this? Well, <laughs> and it, I don't know, but you know, the, it's a really interesting question. I've also, my cousin had posted a tweet about this, asking the same question before this came up. All right, so we'll continue this discussion and, of course, your phone calls on Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease. And a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed the results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Whey, I noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound tub I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's 
the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live will take your calls about whatever is on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've been talking about the woman out in Seattle who presumably changed her race to wind up getting a job for the NAACP. It got discovered when she applied for some committee assignment for the city of Spokane, Washington, for the Citizen Police Ombudsman Commission. And, well, then one of the local news channels got a hold of it, and then social media got a hold of it. So what we're really talking about here, not necessarily the news about some woman says that she is black, but she was born white. Both of her parents are white. The parents say she is a white woman. The question really is about honesty and fraud. And that that's one of the things when libertarians start debating the non-aggression principle. And the non-aggression principle basically says that you have the right to do as you please as long as you do not commit force or fraud against another person. And I would add one additional word and say that as long as you do not commit unjust force or fraud. And I like to make sure that I throw that word in there because then that allows for mutual combat. So if me and Chris decide we're going to go in the middle of the street and just have a boxing match because we want to have a boxing match, if the word unjust is not in there, then neither one of us could throw the first punch. But as long as we're agreeing to it beforehand, then you know you can beat each other up. If someone aggresses against you, then you can then defend yourself. And that's a given because the word aggression does not include retaliation. It, you know, aggression is the initiation of force. If you're defending person or property, then someone else already aggressed. You're using defense. So, you know, like with the fraud, I, I would say that this definitely seems to be fraudulent. But again, it seems that it comes down to motives. Right. And what I was talking about before we had gone to break was that we have people that you decide to become another uh, another sex saying, oh, I always have always felt that I should have been born a man. You know, I grew up as a girl 
and always wanted to do guy things. I never felt comfortable being in a girl's body. I mean, what difference would it be for someone saying, I grew up in a white family, but honestly, I feel like I am truly African-American. But, you know, how, and it, like, like you were saying, it comes down to the motives. Like if someone is open and honest and says, hey, I don't feel like I am Caucasian. I feel like I am African-American. I am going to start the process of, going through the you know the skin change or, or however that they would do it if they were honest about it now if they were specifically changing their race not you know and trying to do it secretly to get say special treatment and commit fraud and other things that's a whole different story yeah and that seems to be what's going on here to where the woman was like oh i can get a job with the naacp i don't know what her job duties are are there but uh this says that she is the president of the local chapter of the NAACP she's an adjunct faculty member at Eastern Washington University and presumably she only got those two positions because she was presenting herself as someone who was not white and you know th this woman walked out of an interview so we're never going to find out why she did what she did because it seems as though she doesn't want to be questioned about it sure she got asked the question is your dad really an african-american man she said quote i don't understand the question i did tell you that the man in the picture is my dad the reporter then said are your parents white she removed the microphone ended the interview and walked away you know, I'll say this, that it, apparently she's using the same name that she did growing up. I mean, if she really was going to commit fraud, I mean, she should at least have changed some things. About her. Don't you don't you think so? So taken on a completely new identity. Right. Because they you know, her parents are coming forward saying this is her birth certificate. Obviously, that's her real birth name that she's using, unless there's some other detail that we haven't talked about or found out but you'd think that if she were going under a completely different race that she might want to hide some other details to prevent any sort of skeletons in the closet or so maybe speak. she didn't care about skeletons yeah. maybe and i mean and, until she actually talks we'll never know if she did it intentionally to commit fraud because she wanted this job or she felt you know very uh you know she felt like that she had been born the wrong skin color and she made these transformations we don't know that yet at this point well so, i mean what they're what the family says and and at least what they've come out with and and this is coming from a CNN article but she had always identified with the black race she had had okay. um a, a black adopted brother and after i guess some some turbulence with the family unit she had adopted him and brought him into the, her family and she had been married to an african american gentleman too um so i guess the the flip side of this whole thing is is did she really do anything wrong i mean if, if she just starts you know i i assume that she didn't flip from barbie girl to you know what we see in the pictures today overnight um, right like that, if she just chose not that, an overnight sort of transformation. right certainly not no and if she just decided you know this is what i want to do and i don't need to ask anybody's permission about it and i do care about uh racial issues I want to get involved in the NAACP. I just happen to work my way up through it. Mm -hmm. You know, then is is it worth all the turmoil that this story seems to be generating? Who am I to say? You know, right, if, yeah. if that's if that makes you happy, great. Yeah. So of course your calls welcome on this or whatever, whether it's teaching our children socialism, and Danica will get into that in just a moment. But first Another place you can find the news is freedomsphoenix.com. Over there at freedomsphoenix.com, they are uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communication, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com. Sign up for the free daily dispatch, freedomsphoenix.com. And I get their daily emails 
And a lot of times I will use it for show prep, whether it be for Free Talk Live, for one of the podcasts that I do. Neat. There's a lot of good info in there. And it's actually a twice daily email that they do. I don't know how they've got this thing set up. I don't know if I accidentally signed up for two different email lists, like a morning and an afternoon. <laughs> but I get their emails twice a day, freedomsphoenix.com. And, of course, this show, all the archives, freetalklive.com. And your calls definitely welcome, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. When we come back, six ways we're teaching our children socialism? That doesn't sound right. Is it? I don't know. If they go to public school, they're probably learning 600 ways about socialism. <laughs> Find out when we come back. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to onesilversolution.com, onesilversolution.com. There is only one silver solution. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because, and avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Hi, Cheryl. Um, I kind of stumbled onto you. I drive home from work on a Saturday night and uh, heard you guys the first couple times I heard you, and I thought, what obnoxious jerks have they got on the radio? <laughs> you sound like my now. wife. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, I grew up very conservative, grew up in Kansas, moved to Florida, um, but you guys have really opened my mind. Um, well, now, wait a minute. You opened your mind. We just gave you a few I don't uh, know. Tips. You know, like I said, I, I was... It was more of a, like a car wreck. I couldn't turn away. Really? You know, I had to listen to you because I'm like, I cannot believe what these guys are saying. And, uh, you know, so I was a little, you know, I'm 43. You know, my daughter's 24. She'll be 25 this year. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of the stuff that was coming out of her mouth that I just took as kind of a, just a crazy youth thing. But um, you guys have, have absolutely opened my mind. Free Talk Live. Seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three. Ian and Mark on their way back from New York City. They were at the Talkers Convention, which is one of the largest industry conventions that takes place. That I believe kicked off last night and ran, you know, until some point today. They will be back in the wee hours of the morning. So in the studio tonight is Daryl. Chris Reitman. And Danica. And Danica is going to tell us all the ways that we teach our children socialist values. That's right. Or at least six of the ways. I, I'm sure we can come up with about 314 other ways. Oh, yeah. That's hilarious. All right. This article is from Liberty.me. Now, Liberty.me, it's kind of like a, you know, can you describe a little bit? It's like a Facebook for, you know, with the Liberty oriented. Okay. So. so- Liberty.me, and I have had a subscription at Liberty.me for Mm -hmm. over a year. It's sort of, I I would call it social networking plus for libertarians. Gotcha. Uh, So there's the social networking aspect where you can post statuses, you can post memes, there's groups. And then there's the publishing aspect where basically you can set up one or more WordPress sites. That's connected to your Liberty.me account. And so then you've got the publishing aspect. There's a lot of free ebooks that you can download from Liberty.me. Oh, okay. There's a lot of what they call Liberty Guides that are shorter than ebooks and they don't have ISBN numbers. They were never intended for, you know, a more traditional publication. So it's sort of an ebook that's not officially an ebook. Gotcha. And then there's also forums and chat rooms. So it's like all of the greatest parts about the internet all put into one site. And you don't have to worry about internet trolls because Liberty.me is a paid service. And internet trolls don't want to pay to be internet trolls. I don't know. You know, $5 a month is not a lot of money. And I'm I'm sure I can think of probably a couple people that would not mind throwing $5 down the drain and just trolling people because we troll within ourselves all the time. I, I have yet to experience an internet troll on Liberty.me. Oh, really? Okay. Well, that's a, that's a good thing. All right. Troll-free zone. Troll-free yes. zone. <laughs> right, because trolls don't want to pay money. I want some troll-free spray. Do, where do I get that? <laughs> troll be gone. <laughs> troll be gone. There we go. All right. So uh, one of the people that's a member of Liberty.me on his publishing site for Liberty.me. It's Jeffrey Tucker, right? That is thestand.liberty.me. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Michael Esch. Yes. Who's writing this story. Yes, he's he's written this article. So all the time we hear older generations saying that millennials need to grow up. Some have said that they do not care about college readiness. Mostly true. They just want out of my basement readiness. That the younger generation needs to take personal responsibility for their lives. We hear that the younger people have no worth eh, work ethic and that they feel entitled to everything. For the most part, this is true, but it has resulted from a parental generation reinforcing socialist ideas at home. All right. So before we go any further, Danica, you were definitely the youngest one in studio tonight. Yes. By definition, I am a millennial. Oh, I wasn't even guessing that you were a millennial. I'm just saying you're <laughs> the, the youngest one. Right. I'm in the older part of the millennials. Like I'm one of the, like I'm, you know, I'm not... Well, I certainly wasn't born in 2000, but I am one of, like on the older spectrum of the millennial age. But yes, I'm still by default a millennial. Right. Well, uh, I, I was just making the point that you're the youngest one here. Uh, and I've never actually seen your work ethic, but I know that you work. And at one time you had two jobs. I don't know how many you've got now. Uh, so it, it seems to me that, you know, from what I've seen of you know what I'm going to I, I'm going to sound like the old guy. Get off my lawn! <laughs> From what I've seen of you know the younger generation, people just a few years younger than me, down to you know like getting out of high school right now. 
I will have to say the vast majority of them have no work ethic at all. Oh, yeah. I've definitely met people that are younger as well as older than me that just don't have a work ethic. And it's just like, what are what? Like, seriously. I mean, but I've been working pretty much since I was like 12, 13 babysitting. So I've had work ethic instilled me from a, from a young age. And, you know, I, you know, I could go on a whole nother tangent about this. But I think for several reasons, parents just don't really instill that work ethic for a number of reasons. Right. I, I just wanted to see if you saw the same thing that I saw sure, about absolutely. You know, those youngins not having work ethic. Oh, to where yeah. It does seem like they want somebody to give them a job and they just want to have the job. They don't want to actually do any work when right. they're at their job. They Well, I should just show up and you give me a paycheck because... Sit around do nothing and get a paycheck. So I've Certainly. always felt that this was one of those uh, products of a boom. Not to go too deeply, but when things are good, you know, back in the day, back when I was your age, <laughs> you know, we had to work around the, you know, you had to work around the house, you had to work around the farm because there wasn't this big boom going on and and when you go through boom to boom to boom um thanks to inflation um and monetary uh policy then quantitative easing yeah. is the <laughs> politically correct term yeah but cheap credit and stuff like that so now we have everything we need we don't need to have kids work for what they do you need 20 bucks to go out go ahead here it is uh it's just the yeah, I didn't grow up theory. on a farm, but I definitely had daily and weekly chores to do, and weekends were just oh, terrible because I'd be had to wake up and do more chores. That seems like that that was the a big part of my childhood. It but, was the norm. Yeah, it was the norm. Socialism is the idea that everyone is responsible for everyone else. No one in the community should have more than another person, no matter your productivity. If someone were to make more money than the authority figure, government would redistribute the money to people in need. So without further ado, here are six ways parents teach socialist values to their children. Number one, sharing. Who around here has had to share? Well, sharing is caring, right? Ah, yes. That's what they want you to believe. Forcing children to share is the laziest form of parenting. All right. So this is not just sharing. This is I am going to force you to share. Oh, yeah. This is because like the just like, you know. Somebody that decides, like, I want other people to be able to play with my toy, too. Like, you know, you can share toys without having been forced to share toys. Hey, you should share that car with me because you should just share that car. Yeah. So, forcing children to share is the laziest form of parenting. A parent will hear two children fighting over a toy and will come into the room, yell at the children to share the toy, and then will walk out. Parents who do this are teaching their children that whenever someone comes to steal your possession, you should just give it to them. If you hold on to your property, then the authority will come in and punish you. Which I've, you know, I'm sure both of you have had this very similar situation happen in your own home. And I can, you know, I can definitely remember times where I was forced to share. Now, a solution to this is that you can teach your children that they are not allowed to steal. If a child is playing with a toy in the house, then that is theirs, and they do not have to share it. Simplifying the rules in the house makes it easier for children to know right from wrong. Children will naturally share because they are social. They want to play with others, and the only way to do that is to share. Sharing is good when it is a choice, but when it is forced, it is unnatural and results in strife. Reduce conflict in your house by stopping the stealing. I completely 100% agree with this. So do I, but... You know, this also in some ways, you know, mommy and daddy, the authorities are giving you toys that, well, you didn't pay for those toys. So technically they aren't yours. Like, you know, the the authority in this case, mom and dad could then like confiscate the toy sure, and they keep certainly it from you. They certainly could. Because technically they're the owners of the toy. It all makes sense to me now. When my dad would see me build something with Legos, he'd say, you didn't build that. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, I'm glad you brought that whole thing up. And I, I am not one at all to praise Barack Obama for anything. But the whole you didn't build that thing was a statement that was totally taken out of context. What he was talking about was the infrastructure that allows businesses to thrive. And if you listen to the full quote, then you'll get the context. And Mitt Romney has said some stupid stuff, too. And when it's 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Your thoughts on teaching children socialism by telling them to share their toys? What are your thoughts on that? And then there are five other ways that parents are either intentionally or inadvertently teaching their children socialism. Danica has that story. And, of course, your thoughts on this or whatever is on your mind. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So 
Uh, on this first thing, that there's a list of six things here. Yes. And I'm still may, maybe I'm you know being a stickler here, but I'm still stuck on this sharing thing and the solution. I, I like the first sentence: teach your children that they are not allowed to steal. Sounds great, but the next sentence does not necessarily jive with reality. It says if a child is playing with a toy in the house, it is theirs. And they do not have to share it. Well, what if I go into Danica's toy box and pull a toy out of Danica's toy box because Danica wasn't playing with that toy. It was just sitting in the toy box. Does that toy now become mine? And Danica, you're not allowed to take your toy back from me? That's a very good question. And going back to what you were saying about how technically the parents have control over the toys because they're the ones that bought it for the kid. Well, they gave it to the child as a gift more than likely. So it's right, not Right, but did they give the thing to the child or are they just letting the child have control over it? Until the parent just gets tired of Until... Johnny making noises with the drums. Yes. I, I think if you're gonna go down this path, you would have to establish those rules and, and the whole notion of property rights at a very young age and right. with the acquisition of everything you bring into the house. Right. I, and that's not something that most people are going to do. And like so, some of the solutions that I hear about, you know, if we had a stateless society, then everybody would have contracts with everybody else. I'm sorry, Chris. I like you. I really do. But I'm not signing a contract every time I get in your vehicle before we go to the state house. Agreed. So the whole, you know, contract law, like that, that seems to me to be tyranny of contracts. And then the contract becomes law and you're replacing one form of coercion with another, even though, well, it's completely voluntary, but you can't interact with another human until you sign 15,000 stacks of paper. Well, back to the point of the article, I mean, I, I just... It would be a little tricky to introduce this idea halfway through a kid's life, you know, when he's three or four years old or four or five. Well, there's simpler ways of doing that. Yeah. Going, you know, going to Daryl's question, say if Daryl in my room and wanted to play with my little pony figurines because Daryl loves ponies. He does. I, as a parent, would say, I like oh, penguins and unicorns, not ponies. No, 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 po pony. I know you're totally all about the ponies. I would say, Danica... Is Daryl allowed to play with your toy? And if Danica said yes, then there'd be no problem. If Danica said no, then Daryl would just have to put ponies back. Because Danica might have reasons that she doesn't want Daryl to play. Like, Daryl might go take the ponies and cut all their hair off. Or he might go stick it in the sandbox. Because Daryl is a boy, and boys are known to do very destructive things to toys. Well, you know, ponies do like running around in the sand. I, I saw part of Planet of the Apes. There's horses on the beach. Exactly. But maybe... I, 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 I saw that... Uh, well, what's the guy that got hit in the face with the goose and he had the, I can't believe it's not butter commercial. Fabio? Fabio. <laughs> there, there was something Jeez. with him where he had a horse on the beach and a pretty girl. Yeah, and there's so the Old Spice commercial like where the guy. On the beach. There's also the Old Spice commercial where the guy gets on a horse, too. Yeah. Look at me. Now look down. Now look up. And I'm on a horse. But I mean, the child, you know, Danica probably has past experiences where Daryl messed with her toys and Danica doesn't want that to happen to her toys. So she says, no, Daryl cannot play with my toys. And then that would be, okay, Daryl, put that toy back. Go play with your train set or go play with dynamite. I don't know. One or the okay. other. You know, that, that that brings me back to something that I really miss from childhood. And Chris, you probably remember these M80s. There yeah. used to be this thing that was essentially a quarter stick of dynamite that you could buy from the fireworks store that all it did was go boom. It had a little fuse and it went boom. And that was one of my favorite fireworks because I would like build model stuff. And of course, the model airplane never wound up looking like the model airplane on the box. And I would take it out back and duct tape an M80 or two or three of them to it and just, you know, make the model airplane go boom. You can't do that anymore because sometime in my teenage years, M80s became illegal. Like, they are banned under federal law. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's nuts. But I, th I think the point is, is do you, how do we teach our children property rights? I mean, that's a fairly sure. complex By thing to... By eating 30% of their... Wait, no, that's how you teach them about taxes, is to <laughs> eat 30% of their ice cream. Okay, here, here's, a, here's a good example of that. 
what do the toys in Toy Story have on their on their feet, on the bottom of their feet? Uh, the name, Andy. The name. Yeah. Why don't we label on wherever we can, you know, the bottom of the feet or whatever? Because Danica then you're pulling all of the things out of the box, and that decreases their collector value. Okay, it's going to decrease collector value if you play with it, too. What's your point? I, I was just making a 40-year-old virgin <laughs> joke. <laughs> Where the, the guy, remember, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, I, I, Steve yes, Carell, yes. the only funny thing he was ever in was 40-year-old virgin. Steve Carell, no, he's been in several things. No, he's been in several <laughs> things. The only funny thing that he was in. And he had all of these, like, Star Wars collectible stuff, right. and they were still in the boxes, and he didn't want anybody, like, looking at the box, because that decreases the collector value. Well, if you're going to play with the toy and you want to be labeled as yours, it's it makes common sense to put some sort of name on it that says, hey, this is clearly Danica's toy, this is clearly Chris's toy, and that way if there's ever anything, okay, who does the toy initially belong to? Okay, that's Danica's property. You have to ask Danica if you can use her property. If not... No, you can't. It's a very simple way of well, instilling I, property values at a young age. I and think. I think that would be good if I, God forbid, were ever have children again. No offense to my son. <laughs> uh, but um, to, to teach it's them okay, those yeah. types of things. I mean, usually what we taught kids growing up was if somebody wants to play, you share your toys. Right. End of question. And that's it. There's There's no, you can't say no. If you do, you're a bad person. And I do think that sharing, it can be a good thing, but. Like the article saying, force sharing is just going to increase strife and you know, it's going to be bitter and they're going to be upset. I mean, they, they shouldn't have to share everything. It's just no. Right, because forced sharing or, or forced charity, and I'm using air quotes around right. the word charity there, that's what government does. Right. Of We care about poor people and we care about homeless people, so we're going to steal money from you. To build this place where poor people and homeless people can come get a meal or come have a place to sleep in the wintertime. Yeah. So that's not charity. That's coercion. Right. So uh, that sort of takes us to the second point on here, which is... Teaching obedience. Dun, dun, dun. And this one I can definitely relate to because I've heard this so many times growing up. I was just like, ugh. When a parent says, because I said so, they are teaching their children blind obedience. This is also a form of lazy parenting. I hate those four words. And it's not I just it lazy too. parenting. It's lazy anything. anything right. I, I've had teachers that basically their explanation for anything of, well, why do we have to do it this way? Because I said so. Or I'm because it's teacher. in the book. I'm the teacher and I said so. So that's how you have to do it. Because it's the way we've always done it. I, I remember one time when I was, I don't know, maybe like nine or ten years old, was at Sunday school at the church that my uh, dad's parents went to. They went to a Church of Christ. And for those of you not familiar with them, they don't play instruments when they sing their hymns. Oh. So everything is a cappella. And they say that they do that because, you know, having music along with the singing, is not something that's in the Bible. Even though, if you go through the Old Testament, you know, like, David played instruments, the angels played trumpets, there's talk of all these other people that, you know, played drums and Isn't this Isn't there a passage that. that says, make a jo joyful noise unto the yeah. Lord? Do, yes. they, do they all walk to church because there's no cars in the Bible? So, <laughs> well, no, no, they don't. Uh, but when I asked the Sunday school teacher this question, her response was a complete non sequitur. She said, well, you don't put jelly on the communion bread. That was her answer, <laughs> which is essentially because I said so. Because, like, she had no answer. And that, that was what I sort of started questioning the whole idea of organized religion. And, you know, like, I still went to church for, like, another 10, 12 years on a fairly regular basis but it was this whole because i said so sort of mentality that led me to you know the idea of hey like organized religion is kind of bs like they're not teaching what the book actually says they're right. teaching what they want you to think and that's basically this teaching obedience and we'll get through this one as well as the other ways we're inadvertently teaching children socialism in hour number two after the news. This is Free Talk Live. 
The Atlas Society's Atlas Summit is just around the corner, June 18th through the 21st, right before Porkfest in Nashua, New Hampshire. Connect, grow, have fun with longtime objectivists and people just learning Ayn Rand's philosophy. There are discounts for students, locals, and one-day rates at atlassociety.org. The event is jam-packed with speakers. Come and be a part of the most important objectivist event of the year, the Atlas Summit, June 18th through the 21st, Nashua, New Hampshire, atlassociety.org. 20% off with coupon code FTL, atlassociety.org. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, June 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.86 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,177 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports before the Islamic State had formally split from Al-Qaeda, there was talk about good Al-Qaeda versus bad Al-Qaeda in Syria, centering around the Islamic State as the more extreme group and Jabhat al-Nusra as the slightly less extreme group. That sort of talk died on the vine as Nusra lost fight after fight to the Islamic State and became less relevant. Now, with Al-Qaeda taking much of the Idlib province and setting up a little statelet of their own, there is a new push in the U.S. to endorse them as new allies against the Islamic State. It's the Hitler v. Stalin thing all over again, and Hawks, desperate for a successful ally on the ground in Syria, are desperately trying to rebrand Al-Qaeda, of all groups, as the lesser of two evils, and hoping to repair the terrorist group's image domestically, which is still considerably tarnished after 9-11. Can it really work, though? After over a decade of war against Al-Qaeda and with no intervening period of calm, it is hard to imagine that the administration or anyone else is going to be able to sell a de facto alliance with Al-Qaeda as the lesser of two anythings, let alone a plan for winning Syria. Underscoring exactly what a tough sell this is going to be, Al-Qaeda is on the warpath in its newly conquered territory, attacking a Druze village and killing at least 20 civilians there. Attacks on religious minorities are every bit as common in Al-Qaeda as they are in the Islamic State Caliphate, and that reflects the reality that Jabhat al-Nusra is the same old Al-Qaeda. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports China's officially appointed head of Tibetan Buddhism said he supported the unity of the People's Republic and that he would align Tibet with the standards of the Chinese Communist Party. Gyaltsen Norbu, denounced as a fake by many Tibetans, is officially atheist. The pro-Beijing appointee nonetheless was selected as the 11th Panchen Lama in 1995 during Beijing's bid to win favor with Tibetans. Tibet's spiritual leader in exile, the Dalai Lama, had independently selected his own successor, a six-year-old who was disappeared after Chinese authorities had him detained. Voice of America reports that the whereabouts of the boy who vanished 20 years ago are not known. Chinese state media reported during a meeting with Chinese President Xi on Wednesday, the 11th Panchen Lama presented a hada to the leader. Xi met with the Beijing-appointed Tibetan youth to reiterate the importance of China's diverse ethnic groups in hopes of actively integrating Tibetans into China's fast-driven development. China incorporated Tibet into the country 50 years ago and has called the Buddhist kingdom the Tibet Autonomous Region since annexation. The 11th Panchen Lama's predecessor spent more than a decade in prison or under house arrest for his criticism of China's central government. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports government officials in North Carolina can refuse to perform same-sex marriages by citing religious objections under a new law enacted on Thursday by the Republican-led legislature, which voted to override the governor's veto. The law protects the jobs of magistrates and other officials who refuse to perform marriages of same-sex couples by citing a sincerely held religious objection. Governor Pat McCrory, also a Republican, had said the officials who swore to defend the Constitution and perform their duties of office should not be exempt exempt from upholding their oaths. The State House of Representatives overrode the veto by reaching a three-fifths majority of 69 to 41. Utah approved a similar opt-out law earlier this year. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. Citing his erratic social behavior, nondescript occupation, and habit of accidentally walking off piers while pretending to read newspapers, acquaintances of 37-year-old Jeff Walter suspect he may be a bumbling spy. Residents of Worcester, Massachusetts are kind of hoping a Panera Bread will show up and plow over an obnoxious neighborhood bakery. Locals have said that the soulless restaurant chain with its simple, impersonal experience would be just the thing to help run the precious mom-and-pop establishment out of business. Callahan's is really lovely and all, but it would be such a relief to have them college-aged kid take my order without making eye contact. I just need a cup of coffee. You know, we're not friends. A follow-up survey of Worcester residents confirmed that 72% of patrons would rather be alerted of an order by a vibrating pager than a kind-faced woman who calls everybody sweetheart. In other news, feds break up a brutal Las Vegas man-fighting ring. A Christmas card ominously makes no mention of the twins. And the Boy Scouts celebrate 100 years of preparing teens for not having cool friends. This is the Onion News Network. Kicking off our number two, this is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free call-in number where you can call in, bring up whatever is on your mind. We're talking about six ways that parents may either intentionally or inadvertently be teaching their children socialist ideas. And the we in studio tonight, it's Daryl. Chris Streetman. And Danica. And Danica has the story from thestand.liberty.me. That's right. Number two. Well, recap number one first for anybody that's joining us in oh, hour yeah. two. I guess that would help. All right. So the first reason was sharing. As forcing children to share is the laziest form of parenting. Parent hears two kids fight. Come over, stop fighting, sharing, and leaves the room. Doesn't teach anything about respecting their property rights and just lets them know that if we hold on to our property, then the authority will come and punish you. Well, basically what they're teaching is they're teaching number two. Right. And number two is teaching, teaching obedience. obedience. 
When a parent says, because I said so, they are teaching their children blind obedience. It reinforces the idea that a child has no say in their lives. They are supposed to obey authority no matter what. As children grow up hearing this phrase, it results in some of the most heinous of crimes, and the defense is, surprise, surprise, I was just following orders. I mean, how many times have we heard that? We're I've heard orders. that a bunch, and I also remember this thing. Chris, you might be able to help me. What was it called? The the Nuremberg Principles that said that I'm just following orders is not a valid excuse for the commission of a war crime or the violation of human rights. Correct. But yet, when we see police officers beating teenagers who may not have had permission to be at a pool party, the excuse is, well, in this case, the excuse was he let his emotions get the best of him. But every other time when somebody winds up getting you know, killed, pepper sprayed, injured by police, was just doing my job. Was well, just doing what I was told, and and it also brings up the whole thing of, in in the military, it's obeying a lawful order, and and that but happened. you're not allowed to make the decision on the spot whether it's lawful or not. Right. Just like if a police officer tells you to do something, exactly. and I've heard numerous judges say, you do whatever the cop tells you, and if you have a problem with it, you bring it up in court. Right. Well, I'm active in Oath Keepers, and we try to convince veterans and law enforcement that you should do the opposite. You're capable of making a call on whether something is morally correct or right. constitutional. So this this whole thing about um, respecting authority, it just it 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 snowballs and you can really see that that what we teach our kids when they're young, listen to your teacher, listen to your parents, do what they say. I, I can't remember how many times I came home complaining about a teacher and my mom said, well, it doesn't matter whether you're right or they're right. They're the teacher. And you you do what they say, and I'm right. Like, right, and there's a difference between respecting the teacher right. and not blindly following what they're saying. So you can certainly disagree and not follow te- what a teacher says very respectively. Right. And that's what, you know, in yeah. hindsight, that's what your parents should have said. Just say, oh, Chris, tell me what they're talking about. You know, discuss it with me. And then in reality, in reality, that would have been nice. Yeah. But we're teaching children. Basically, there's no such thing as critical thinking. You don't need to think. You don't need to analyze. Just do what you're told. I I remember one time when I was in, I don't know, either eighth or ninth grade. I, I was in junior high is really all I remember. And it was an algebra class, I think, or geometry. Well, one of the two. And there was an assignment where we had to do something with half a sheet of poster board. And I'm sure both of you are aware that poster board is not square. It's a rectangle, Mm -hmm. which means that there are numerous ways that you can cut that in half to still get half a sheet of poster board. Well, instead of cutting it the way that most people did to where it looked like, you know, a smaller square like thing. I cut it along that long edge so it was obviously a rectangle because I wanted to use that size instead of the other size. The teacher failed me and said it was not half a sheet of poster board. I said, you put any of these other two together and put this and it will be half. And she didn't want to hear it. Gave me a failing grade on the assignment. So during during, uh, the next class, one of the... Students was asking, like, you know, what were you so upset with this teacher about? And so I started just cussing and like, you know, this blankety blank gave me a bad grade because she doesn't know a blankety (laughs) blank half sheet of blankety blank poster board if a blankety blank bit her on her butt. And so he then goes and tells the teacher that I was talking bad about her. And she gave me an assignment where I, as punishment, had to write a five page paper on respect wow yeah have you, have you finished it yet <laughs> oh i i finished it uh overnight i i was wish i would have made a copy was it double space no no it was handwritten like this was before oh you know sweetheart we then. didn't have computers in every home i know when I, I was, was making a high. joke i thought you were using a typewriter my bad the ibm selector <laughs> no so it th- this was a handwritten five page thing 
and some I, I wish I would have made a copy because like I had some great one liners in there <laughs> about uh re what one of them was respect for some people is like a roll of toilet paper, long and useful. But my respect for you is like another roll of toilet paper that was used and flushed down the toilet and is now in the sewage treatment plant. <laughs> or cheap and tear and tore up. <laughs> Were you then required to write yet another paper? No, she never okay. said anything about it. Oh, nice. all right. So the solution to the obedience is that parents should explain their decisions to their children. As a child grows, he should have more control and decision making. Also, if you want to make your child person if you want to teach your child personal responsibility, then allowing your child to make poor decisions is a learning lesson. Yes, this is sometimes more stressful, but it results in a child that takes charge of their lives and learns to deal with their consequences. Now, th and this was hard for my parents to understand because my parents definitely had a huge role in my life and they were trying to make a lot of choices for me. And their excuses when I confronted them about it years later was so that I wouldn't have to deal with, you know, heartbreak and a bunch of other reasons that they did that, which, you know, I understand that they were trying to do mean well in their decisions. But a lot of it was just an absolute crutch for me. Yeah, you know, I wasn't able to really, hey, I I should take this choice and then have it blow up my face and realize, okay, that choice was very stupid. I will learn and I will go forth and not make that mistake again. Like, yeah, it, it sucks. But sometimes we, we have to make choices to realize, hey, that's not a good idea. Or, hey, that hurt. Now I know what I need to do. Right. And you can't protect your child forever. Correct. Like you, you can tell your kid, like when I was your age, I did this and it didn't work out and this happened. But until the kid actually does whatever it is, whether it's, you know, like I, I want to go touch the stove when it's on, like you can tell them a hundred times, don't do that. It's hot. It's going to hurt. <laughs> but uh, until the kid touches it one time and realizes, wait a second, that hurt. I don't want to ever do that Correct. again. Right. Other, yeah. They're you know, like, you can tell them until you're blue in the face, but they have to make the bad choice on their own. They have to realize that that hurts when you touch it. So as a parent, I can definitely see where I'm guilty of this. There were a number of times that I probably just got frustrated and said, you do it because I told you to do it. <laughs> I did that. Undoubtedly. But why do I have to pick up my toys? Because I stepped on your Legos and it hurt. But I can also say that I did explain my decisions. I think I did that probably a lot. I, I remember mm -hmm. having a lot of conversation. I didn't want to see my kids storm off just pissed off because I, I came up with this random rule that he now has to follow. I would explain myself, which probably annoyed so the heck what, out of him. What were some of the weird random rules that you had? As a, it was parent. never a weird random rule as a parent. It was all common sense stuff, you know. No, you 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 can't cut a table that's in the basement apart to make a skateboard ramp. <laughs> Why? Because I paid a lot of money for it. We're going to use it again sometime. But we're not using it now, Dad. Like it, exactly. it could be a really cool yeah. skateboard ramp. That's a true story. And then later on that night, I heard a saw going. Wow. So I want to know when <laughs> we too. come back, what was being sawed in the basement of the Reitman house? And your call is welcome. 855-450 free. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. 
Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a hidden holster from hiddenholster.com. It's the original hidden holster. The hidden holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to hiddenholster.com. That's hiddenholster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a hidden holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to hiddenholster.com. That's hiddenholster.com. The original hidden holster. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Danica, we will get back to the story that you've got about six ways that parents are teaching their children socialist ideas in just a moment, but something that is not a socialist ideal That would be Bitcoin. And where can you spend Bitcoin? Well, spendbitcoins.com. It's one of the oldest and largest Bitcoin merchant directories, and it's for sale. Over 10,000 Bitcoin accepting merchants are listed. There's over 100,000 Bitcoin accepting merchants. Spendbitcoin.com has over 10,000 of them on one site. They've had over 3 million page views since their inception, And the number one Google search for uh, terms that lead you to spendbitcoins.com is where can I spend bitcoins? Sell bitcoins, sell ads, sell premium listings. The world is your oyster with spend bitcoins. Spendbitcoins.com slash sell. All right. So to recap, the first point that we had discussed was sharing. The second one was teaching obedience. So the third one, and this is definitely going to ruffle some feathers, is unnecessary force. Sometimes when a child is not obedient, it is easy to use unnecessary force to maintain compliance. When punishments are too harsh, a parent can usually manipulate a child to do almost anything. This teaches our children that punishments can never go too far. After growing up with harsh punishments, it is no no wonder majority of Americans 
agree with government torturing prisoners. And let, let's sort of pause on this for a second before we get into the solution and how you don't use unnecessary force on your children. I've heard some people say that waterboarding is not torture. I've heard some people say that uh, any of the horrible things that were done in Abu Ghraib, that none of those were torture. Making people think that they were about to get electrocuted is not torture, according to some people. Ugh, according that's, that's to awful. some people, the only things that are torture are like shoving bamboo under fingernails or actually beating them or flogging them to death. Ugh. But, you know, making someone think that they're drowning by pouring buckets of water on their face, that's not torture, according to some people. So it's this weird, twisted definition of what's torture that leads some people to say that it's okay to torture because they're being asked the question, not is it okay to torture someone, but... Is it okay to simulate drowning? Is it okay to waterboard someone? And they're being told this isn't torture. Dick Cheney said it's not torture. It's enhanced interrogation. Ugh. There is a national uh, radio host that I think is now only on satellite, Man Cow. He said for the longest time, like, waterboarding is not torture. And to prove it, I'll let myself be waterboarded. And he he was in complete control. Oh, Even though he was the one having the water thrown on his head, like there, there was a signal that he could uh -huh. give to stop it. He stopped it 30 seconds in and he was saying like, I could have this done for like 10 minutes. And he stopped it after like the first like half bucket of water. Oh my God. Because yeah, it was so horrible. Okay. See, I, I, not to digress, but mm -hmm. just looking at the, that poll that's referenced in the article, Washington Post poll asked people, all in all, do you think the CIA's treatment of suspected terrorists was justified or unjustified? So they're in, not even asking about torture. They're not asking. That's about where you get your two to one. That's right. that's what it is. And there's no discussion of details or the circumstances. Just the question basically says, "Do you trust your government? Yes or no?" And that that's <laughs> the thing with. And I, I've heard the saying all the time of you know the wonderful thing about statistics is you can make them prove anything. That's the wonder, you know, quote unquote, wonderful thing about uh, opinion polls. You can make them prove anything depending on how you ask the question. Right. If you copy it, cop, um, couple it with the right headline, then you get whatever result you want. So. Right. But no, when, when you're asking the questions, uh, calling people on the phone and asking the question, they're not getting a headline. They're hearing you ask a question. And I've seen surveys that were done where they asked the same question five different ways to prove that it depends on how you ask the question that determines what people are going to respond. And these polls, like they, they had vast swings of like 25, 30 percent just because of like a slight tweak in how the question was asked. Yeah. So you both are parents then. How did you punish your punish your child if he misbehaved or did something that he should have done? It was usually taking away privileges. Okay. You know, he, he didn't uh, spank? Oh, I, I whacked him a couple times, I'm sure. Um yeah. I, it was just like a it was just like a one whack on the behind, right? Not like a series of No, no, not like uh like what I think of as bad corporal punishment. But yeah, right. I, I spanked the kid when he was growing up. Um I don't know if I'd do it again if I had another child. I, I hope I wouldn't. Okay. Um, but again, I'm I'm. What do we have here? We have the millennials represented. You're are you Gen X? Uh, technically, I'm Gen X. Okay. Well, I'm. I, I don't really identify with anything. <laughs> All right. We're just going statistically. When were you born, and what do you? I, fall I, into? I was born 1970. <laughs> technically, I'm Gen X. There we go. And I am uh, the last year of the baby boomers. So, so we have a pretty broad. Uh, representation and and again it's it's you know what did what were you raised with and that becomes sort of with your norm as you become yeah. a parent and yeah my dad whacked me when I deserved it and, right my parents are both baby boomers and I you know, I was definitely spanked as a child as I as I got older probably I probably stopped getting spanked after the age of ten I think I think God, you were bad. <laughs> well I I didn't get spanked that often but whenever I got punished it was spanking up until. I reached 10, and I think after that, 
uh, I would have privileges taken away, like I wasn't allowed on the computer, I yeah. wasn't allowed to go play outside. Um, you know, then it became less about that and just taking away privileges because you know, I'm, right. you know, they've just figured I was too old to be spanked and. Spanking is just usually for something that's really minor, and then taking away privileges really has an impactfulness on the child when he's conscious enough to be like, oh, hey, crap, I can't go ride my bike after dinner. So, you know, about your son, Daryl, uh, what punishment did you use on him? Uh, I would get, you know, I, under certain circumstances, I would give like a slight, you know, whack on the butt. Like, you know, if mm-hmm. we were somewhere and he wasn't behaving, you know, behave, and after, like, the tenth time, like, little smack on the butt, behave. Did either one of you use timeout? I don't think I ever got told yeah, to timeout. I time tried out. that. It just never worked. I just never, I personally, I never saw the point in it because, okay, I'd just go be by myself and grab right. a book or whatever. But it was just, it was so wall. annoying to try to enforce, too, because... Yeah, I don't know. It was easier for me to take away a cell phone or cell phone charger, even better. Yeah, I mean, even I mean, nowadays it's easy to punish a child to say, "Okay, I'm going to take your iPhone away," or or something like that. And, yeah, the, the whole timeout thing or go sit in a corner to me it just seems to be completely pointless. And the reason I say that is, uh, at one point when I was a kid, we had foster kids, oh, okay. and one of them was always getting in trouble. My dad put him in the corner one time. This kid pulled the hinges off of the closet door. Oh, whoa. So, like, you know, I saw firsthand sitting in the corner doesn't work. We'll come back and take your call. Straight Razor, stay on the line. This is Free Talk Live. Now, a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are 
having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've been talking about six ways that parents are either intentionally or unintentionally teaching their children socialist ideas. We're on point number three. Let me go back through the first two. Sharing, and not just teaching your children to share because you know it's the polite thing to do for sharing forced sharing uh and that teaches them point number two which is blind obedience because i said so i was just following orders point number three is unnecessary force and we're only about halfway through this point and this sort of brought up the topic of spanking and straight razor is calling in from texas listening on the tune in app straight razor you're on free talk live good evening great to speak to you so as far as point number two goes um where it's just blind obedience one it's ineffective and too damaging but it's also incredibly ineffective for law enforcers um, that's one of the things that that I would never do myself and would try and teach other, others not to do. Because when you say, I need your ID, and they ask why, you can't just say, because I need it. That just leads to a confrontation. So if I were to pull up on something like a trespasser that's been trespassing multiple times, Um, and say, I need your your identification, and they said, why? Then I would explain to them why I needed the identification, and usually things would go much better than just saying, well, because I said so. So let let me ask this question, Straight Razor, because I've had a couple of incidents where a police officer has asked me for my identification, and I ask the question, am I being accused of having committed a crime? And a couple of times they have said no, and there was one time where they did say yes. Uh, The crime that I was accused of having committed was trespassing on public property, something that I'm still not entirely sure how it happens. But so on, on the times where they said no, I said, okay, then I'm not showing you any document. I will tell you my name and told them my name is Daryl Perry and spelled it for them. And they still were adamant that they needed to see a government-issued document to prove that I was who I said I was. So how would you handle that situation? Okay, so so you don't have to commit a crime to have to be required to show ID. It depends on the state. Yes, generally. So in in Texas, um, you either had to have committed a crime— be involved in that crime in some way. In other words, you were the getaway driver or whatever, and uh, or if you were a witness. And, you know, those three are, are pretty good reasons to uh, need to know who you are. Okay. How about, uh, how about I, um... I, I, I will say th- those are, you know, good reasons to ask someone to identify themselves. 
but there's no obligation for me if I'm walking down the street to have any government document on me. Well, exactly. So it, it, the the ID simply makes things easier. So if if I had somebody who didn't have an ID, then I get their name, then I have to go back and enter you in the system to see if you pop up. If you don't, and let's say let's say you've you've witnessed a murder, um, and it's really important that that I know exactly who you are, so that uh, we can make sure that whoever did the, whoever committed the murder is is charged properly. Then, if you don't pop up, then there's a much longer process I have to go through to identify you. So the ID is really more of just an ease type of situation. So in the case of I was allegedly trespassing on public property, what's the point of me showing a piece of plastic that says my name after I just told you my name? Yeah, well, see, that's that's going to be officer dependent. Now, as far as the trespassing on public property, I, you know, I don't know the the entire scenario, but was it like a, a park or something where they've got posted times where you're allowed to use, which I'm against anyway? No, it was but, a public uh, sidewalk near a college. Okay, yeah. So, it, it not here in Keene. Of, <laughs> Can't help but laugh on that one. <laughs> probably just a matter of uh, I'm going to hassle you as much as possible. Right, and the funny so, thing is. The security guard had asked me to leave, and I said, okay, and I was leaving, but I had to, like, stay on their sidewalk because I was half, I was in the middle of campus. Keep off the grass. So, yeah, I was on the sidewalk, and that's when a police officer showed oh, up man. and started hassling me after I was attempting to leave. Did you tell him that you were already asked to leave by yes, a security guard? Yes, and so he... the, secu- the security guard was right there. He was right there? But it didn't matter. I'm here now. You need to give me all of your documents, blah, blah, blah. I will arrest you if you don't. See, I've worked both in uh, in more than one state. In fact, I'm, you know, (laughs) due to recent events, I'm now working uh, security again. But um, so in some states, for instance, in uh, North Carolina, if I was the security guard there, um, I am basically the manager of that property whenever the manager isn't there. So when the police pulled up and I've had this happen, I would actually ask the police to leave because there's not a call for service here. Yeah, I I think what happened in this scenario was the police were called before the security guard asked us to leave. And, well, somebody called us, so we're here now. You don't get to tell us to leave. Chris, I think you were going to make a point about something. No, I just, when we're talking about having to show papers and things like that, it is also dependent on whether you're behind the wheel or not. In almost every state, it's a requirement that you have to provide your identification if you are behind the wheel. Right, but walking down a sidewalk... Yeah, shouldn't apply. Then at there all. is absolutely no requirement to have right. a government document. What on if you're you? out walking your dog? It's like okay, I you know I may have my keys with me, but why would I have my ID walking my dog? Yeah, there, there was one time I was filming a protest, and police showed up. They start hassling me because I was filming, and the police officer asked me for ID, and I. Again, said, you know, am I being accused of having committed a crime? He said, no, but you're here and you're filming, so I need to know who you are. And I asked again, like, why? Well, because you're here. (laughs) And so I, again, told him my name. And he said, well, you need to show me a government document that has that name. Otherwise, I don't know who you are. And I said, I just told you. And then I called to somebody else and said, tell this guy who I am. And he just relayed my name, and then after, like, five more minutes of arguing about whether or not I was required to carry ID on me to stand on a sidewalk to film a protest, the police just left. Exactly, because you you popped up in their system. They were just trying to hassle you more, um, which is kind of like, oh, well, look at look at how big my member is because I can hassle you. Um, but it's, as far as... Um, filming that's that's when things get muddy um it's going to depend on how good a person the officer is who is is responding because if they want to push it then 
you know, they they use that vague description of, well, you could have witnessed a crime simply because you are filming. And <laughs> yeah, I, I'm we, filming you know, a protest sure from exactly 15 feet so. away, and I'm obviously interfering with whatever's going on. Or you don't have a permit or whatever I'll, reason they can use. No, they I, use I had a press badge on me. Well, how do we know it's an official press badge? You could have printed no that thing, thing up at home. I know. That there's no such thing. Well, the, in, in certain circumstances, there are more official press badges. And, and before we go any further, back to Danica's point about walking the dog, before we all pat ourselves on the back and say, it's still a free country because we can walk without having to have our papers, our dogs can't. Huh. Your yeah. dog has to have ID when you're walking that dog. That's true. Straight Razor, thanks for the call and your calls. Welcome. Blind obedience, unnecessary force, whatever else is on your mind, 855-450 free. Searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. It is the year 91001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in... Hyperchromius, a classic role-playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other game before. The liberty-oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hyperchromius today. Use the code FTL to get one dollar off. Hyperchromius, zog.ninja, code FTL. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. We the people people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, and carting to a private bank, having it led back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. 
You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live, 855-450. Free that's 855-450-3733. We're talking about ways that children are being taught uh, Social- socialist right. ideas. And we'll take your calls, of course, about this or anything else. And I just got reminded by Ian, who apparently is listening and sent me a message on Skype. And you can... Either do that or call on Skype, LRN.FM. Ian sent me a message reminding me of something that we were talking about off air that, Chris, you never told us what happened with the table (laughs) and the skateboard ramp. (laughs) Yeah. So tell us that story before we take the call from Jesse. Well, as it turned out, I had said, no, you cannot make a skateboard ramp as I, I... think back and I recall how this went down. They wanted to build a skateboard ramp in the basement. I said no. And how later, big of a ceiling did you have in the basement? It was like eight, nine feet, you know. And they would have taken this thing outside and played oh, with okay. it in the I, street and stuff like that. Well, when Who you skateboards said build in the it, basement? He said they wanted to build a ramp in the basement. Well, I thought they were going to skateboard in the basement. Because obviously he didn't have a garage or some other place where normally well, he would no, skateboards no, no. in the garage. The garage is where we called it the basement. The garage was there. That's where all my expensive power tools were. The so, garage is where you keep your cars. Now we had plenty of room and for those, And it's taken to a driveway where you can go down and jump off of a ramp. Come on, Daryl. I'll draw you a map later. So <laughs> long okay. and the short in this garage slash basement, after telling them, no, I don't want them building a skateboard ramp, uh, we hear a saw going. I make it downstairs. After I identify, I'm sitting there going, what the heck? Who's building what? And then I realized it was downstairs in our own house. I went down there, and uh, it was a beautiful oak table with a leaf um, that by the time I got down there was now uh, half of a skateboard ramp with all the legs cut off. Yeah, it was was painful. That, that, That is very painful. But something that is not painful is using ExpressCoin.com. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies be it Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They are a licensed money services business. You can get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check. Just start off at ExpressCoin.com. Whether it's in the U.S. or Canada, ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. Use coupon code FTL to get up to $40 Worth of your cryptocurrency with no fee at all. Expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL. And now to the phones and the fun. Jesse in Lake Isabella, California. You want to talk about dog licenses. Do you have that problem in Lake, Lake Isabella? Oh, you know what the problem is? Lately, because of these new laws where they have to, these restaurants and businesses have to have a patio where the dogs are allowed. You hit a nerve when you said something about dogs have to have ID. Now, you know what? This could be a good way for the government to find out who we are without invading our privacy by having the right to approach you and your dog and say, can I see your dog's ID? Can I see paperwork on that dog? That's a very good point because a lot of cities require your dog to have some sort of license. You have to yeah, you pay licensing fees for it or have it be chipped. Yep, or it has to be tagged. It has to be, yeah. Yeah, we're tripping over dogs now. The last couple of months, we can't even get a cup of coffee without dogs all over the sidewalks. And when you stated the fact that dogs have to have ID, it hit me, and it just about knocked me out of my chair. This could be a government way and an approach that's more people-friendly to invade your privacy by, is your dog tagged? Let me see the tags so they know who you are and they know where you live. And they don't even have to ask you for your ID. But I just want to get that to you. That was just like, I just had to vent that. It was like, 
Yeah, so well, that's probably a that's probably not too far off. You, you you've from. actually got me confused about something else. You said that there's a requirement that there be a patio for the dogs out there in Lake yeah, Isabella. We're to, we're, we're, yeah, we're going to restaurants right now, where uh, these restaurants, at least around these rural areas, are being told that you need to have a place and allow the dogs to come up to a patio outside the outside the restaurant. You have to have a place for them so people can come up and bring their dogs, and there's dogs all over the place now. You it, can't sit outside without tripping over someone, someone's dog. Is this a local restaurant. Is this a local ordinance or some statewide thing there in California? You know, I'm re- reading the papers, it seems to be a state law. I do remember reading that it was a state law that was recently passed that these establishments have to consider, and, and more than consider, they have to put it out there. They have to give these people places to bring their dogs with them that's, so, that's you know, insane look, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's what all the business businesses are telling me when i'm seeing all these dogs all that, we're told that, we that have. seems wow. incredibly difficult especially if it's some sort of place like you know downtown keen to where there's sidewalk right in front of the door there is nowhere yeah, to really put a patio but you're going to be tripping. Everyone's going to be tripping over the. They don't even move them. Both. A lot of people are good with their animals, but a lot of these people don't care. They'll have these dogs just blocking the sidewalk, and you have to walk around with them. And it just it just ballooned recently because of this. I we'll have to or, or yeah have to dig into that a little bit and see if there's uh, some regulation what the law actually is behind it. I mean, it's one of those things that if you own a business and you want to be pet friendly, you may get some more people to come and. Yeah, take part in your business, and you'll get other idea. people like me. They'll stay away. Sure, you don't like yeah. dogs. No, I I mean like if, if we're looking for a hotel and a hotel says, "Hey, we're pet friendly," I'm like, "Yeah, we spent one night next to a barking dog. That won't happen again." Okay, yeah, they can be a good and yeah, a bad thing. They get in in a basket with laundry. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to get that to, to me. It seems like yeah, in the future, I can just see these police coming up and animal control just coming up to you and approaching you at the table. You're having a pizza and a beer, and they're saying, "Hey, hey, hey." I need to look at your dog's license. You know, do you have paperwork? Yeah, it does not dog? sound like something that would be, you know, entirely foreign to what's going on because it just seems that that's how things are going. Any excuse to stop people, ask for ID, ask for anything else. Jesse, thank you for the call. And something that I find interesting with the whole pet licensing. You've got to get licenses for your dog, but what about for your cat or your gerbil or for your hamster? It's just cats and dogs, and it's different by city. Uh, I have, I, I've i never heard of any place requiring a cat license. I don't know how like strict it is. I know when, when I rescued the cat that I have, uh, she automatically just came with the chip. And I'm okay with my cats being checked because obviously if, if my cats are strictly indoors, but if for some reason that they were ever to get out and someone found them, they can identify them. And it's much less uh, restricted than, say, a collar where it can get caught or they can get choked or something like that. I'm, right. So you um, wouldn't mind a chip either instead of having to carry around a driver's license? A chip for myself? Yeah. Could we just chip you? That way the cops can read who you are as you wander by. <laughs> no. Is that okay? No. But I'm, I'm just checking. No. Yeah, just... I'm I'm totally okay with my cat being that, but as far as licensing for my cat, I think there is, and I could be wrong. It might just be dogs, but I I'm sure there is something for cats. But for there, me, there might I be, and I don't have a license for my enforced. cats because my cats stay indoors and they're chipped, and that's all that really matters to me. Uh, I know some people refuse to license their dogs because you know, again, my dog is always around. My dog is always around here. Why in the heck would I get them licensed? Proves that the dog is a dog. All right, let's see. <laughs> All right. The, so the solution to the number three, unnecessary force. And this one is kind of a little weird, and I wanted to get your opinions about it when, when we're done, obviously. There are natural consequences to every action that we take. As parents, we should try to mimic these natural consequences. If Johnny hits his sister, then he is not allowed to play with her. This is a natural consequence. No, a natural consequence is Johnny hits his sister and the sister hits Johnny back. <laughs> That's a natural consequence. Hey, so if you want to mimic make it that, right, then you need to punch little Johnny in his mouth. But that would be unnecessary. Like it's not, you know, proper or prudent for a parent to knock their kid into a coma 
because he pulled his sister's hair. Well, going on this, there are, there are cases where necessary force is obviously necessary. If your child is wandering out to the street and there's a car coming in, of course you're going to use force to grab the child right. and pull him back. But when Daryl yes. almost got hit by a train, it was necessary to dive Ex- across the train tracks and tackle Daryl off of the train. Sure, absolutely. There certainly is a cause for necessary force. That happened force. when I was five. Okay, oh. you play in train tracks. Okay. Good Lord. No, so I, I'll, I'll explain the story <laughs> off the air, and for anybody that wants to know, send me an email, Daryl at freetalklive.com. I'll relay the story. <laughs> it, it's actually fairly humorous. I might tell it on the air. Coming up, hour number three, we'll finish this. Six ways parents are teaching their children socialist ideas and your calls, 855-450-FREE. They say life is about choices. So let me introduce you to one of the best choices you can make in life, Granger Choice. The Granger Choice product line has just about everything we need to keep this place running, from batteries to V-belts, safety to sump pumps, and with Granger Choice, we can trust that every product is dependable and cost-effective. When it comes to making life choices, here's a great one. Granger Choice. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com slash choice or stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, June 12th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.86 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,177 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $233. Antiwar.com reports before the Islamic State had formally split from Al-Qaeda, there was talk about good Al-Qaeda versus bad Al-Qaeda in Syria, centering around the Islamic State as the more extreme group and Jabhat al-Nusra as the slightly less extreme group. That sort of talk died on the vine as Nusra lost fight after fight to the Islamic State and became less relevant. Now, with Al-Qaeda taking much of the Idlib province and setting up a little statelet of their own, there is a new push in the U.S. to endorse them as new allies against the Islamic State. It's the Hitler v. Stalin thing all over again, and hawks, desperate for a successful ally on the ground in Syria, are desperately trying to rebrand Al-Qaeda, of all groups, as the lesser of two evils, and hoping to repair the terrorist group's image domestically, which is still considerably tarnished after 9-11. Can it really work, though? After over a decade of war against Al-Qaeda, and with no intervening period of calm, it is hard to imagine that the administration, or anyone else is going to be able to sell a de facto alliance with al-Qaeda as the lesser of two anythings, let alone a plan for winning Syria. Underscoring exactly what a tough sell this is going to be, al-Qaeda is on the warpath in its newly conquered territory, attacking a Druze village and killing at least 20 civilians there. Attacks on religious minorities are every bit as common in al-Qaeda as they are in the Islamic State Caliphate, and that reflects the reality that Jabhat al-Nusra is the same old al-Qaeda. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports, China's officially appointed head of Tibetan Buddhism said he supported the unity of the People's Republic and that he would align Tibet with the standards of the Chinese Communist Party. Gyaltsen Norbu, denounced as a fake by many Tibetans, is officially atheist. The pro-Beijing appointee nonetheless was selected as the 11th Panchen Lama in 1995 during Beijing's bid to win favor with Tibetans. Tibet's spiritual leader in exile, the Dalai Lama, had independently selected his own successor, a six year old who was disappeared after Chinese authorities had him detained. Voice of America reports that the whereabouts of the boy who vanished 20 years ago are not known. Chinese state media reported during a meeting with Chinese President Xi on Wednesday, the 11th Panchen Lama presented a hada to the leader. Xi met with the Beijing-appointed Tibetan youth to reiterate the importance of China's diverse ethnic groups in hopes of actively integrating Tibetans into China's fast-driven development. China incorporated Tibetan Tibet into the country 50 years ago and has called the Buddhist kingdom the Tibet Autonomous Region since annexation. The 11th Panchen Lama's predecessor spent more than a decade in prison or under house arrest for his criticism of China's central government. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports government officials in North Carolina can refuse to perform same-sex marriages by citing religious objections under a new law enacted on Thursday by the Republican-led legislature, which voted to override the governor's veto. The law protects the jobs of magistrates and other officials who refuse to perform marriages of same-sex couples by citing a sincerely held religious objection. Governor Pat McCrory, also a Republican, had said the officials who swore to defend the Constitution and perform their duties of office should not be ex exempt from upholding their oaths. The State House of Representatives overrode the veto by reaching a three-fifths majority of 69 to 41. Utah approved a similar opt-out law earlier this year. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Regarded by many as one of the fastest rising online personalities today, social media rock star Ryan Wasserman has 250,000 loyal Twitter followers and earns $28,000 a year at his job as an administrative assistant. The Onion spoke to the online luminary at KPL Insurance, where he works from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and makes roughly $13 an hour. I'm just trying to bring my unique perspective to everybody. Um, that's what my followers expect, and I like to think I deliver. Wasserman, who currently has $900 in his checking account, regularly engages in conversations with high-profile celebrities and takes the bus to work from the two-bedroom apartment he shares with a 23-year-old he met on Craigslist. Actually, I just started a Tumblr because sometimes 140 characters just doesn't cut it. I just had a Google Glass tweet that Questlove retweeted again. Um, so, uh, so, KPL, this is Ryan. Yeah, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. Uh... This is the Onion News Network. We're kicking off our number three. This is Free Talk Live. And of course, your calls welcome 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've been talking about six ways that parents are teaching their children socialist ideas. Some of the ways are through forced sharing, teaching children blind obedience, and of course, through unnecessary force. There are still three more on this list that we will get through. We hopefully will get to before the end of the night. 
and the we in studio tonight. It's me, Daryl. Chris Reitman. And Danica. And we will get back to this in just a moment. But first, to Skype, we have Christopher calling in from Georgia. And you can also call in on Skype. Generally, it sounds better if you have a decent internet connection and a decent microphone. That username is lrn.fm. Christopher, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. I was wanting to point out something about punishment and you know it really depends on the child my daughter you could spank her she'll just look at you like is that all you got Mm -hmm. put her in a (laughs) corner for a good five minutes and it's like the world just ended yeah so it's definitely one of these things to where you have to figure out what works best for your child and sometimes telling them that they can't play video games or take away their they cell phone. Have yep. to go play outside. Mm-hmm. Not just you know, Danica. I know you said that when you were punished, you were not allowed to go play outside. But now, like playing outside is a foreign <laughs> concept to children. Like, Don't okay, I'm outside. What well, what do I do? Like, I I can look at tree. Like, what well, what am I supposed to do outside? Well, you know, as long as you're not breaking the law by being outside, then yes. Violating mm-hmm. curfew. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Christopher. It It's so individualized, and kids change as they grow up. So what worked for the longest time, you suddenly find sure. out, is no longer effective. So it's it's a lot of trial and error. And I don't want to make it all about punishing kids. You're, you're trying to teach, you know, through some adverse effect. It's the equivalent of Daryl's example of putting your hand on the stove. If you do these things I've asked you not to for a good reason, and I've explained it to you and you continue to do it, there has to be a consequence, and sometimes you don't get the burn from the stove. you got to get it another way. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, I wasn't punished a lot as a child, but every now and then, okay, you've got to go to your room. Go, go to your room and stay in there and think about what you've done. Well, now that would not work because how many electronic devices do kids have in their room? They've got laptops, probably a desktop. They've got right. iPads. And more than phones, they've got you know right. everything else under the sun. And more than likely, some type of modern punishment would be to take away said electronics. Right. And, you know, that will you know that's probably an efficient punishment for about ninety percent of today's kids. But you <laughs> sit know. in your room and read a book. Okay, that's what I was going to go do anyway. Right. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I, I'd shut off internet access. That was like the worst thing when when my kids were. Yeah. Growing see, up. they didn't have that when I was a kid. Yeah. Me either. Chris, what was some of the, or Christopher, what were some of the punishments that you received as a child? Oh, I was put through walls. Um, I had my neck broken. I was strangled, what? you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. My, my childhood wasn't that great, but I yeah, it doesn't made a sound vow that. that the most, <laughs> I made a vow the most I would ever do is spank my children. And with my daughter, she just looks at me like, is that all you got? Right. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it's it's amazing. But what? I stick her in the corner. I mean, she's about six years old now. So I stick her in the corner and it's like the world just ended. And then I'll sit down and I'll talk with her and explain why exactly not to do that. And I think that's one of the most effective punishments as far as she's concerned. But you always want to have a conversation with your kid after you've punished them to explain to them why it is that they received that. Oh, I definitely agree. And that's the big thing. And I think that that's missing from a lot of parents, not just parents nowadays, but also you know my generation. And Chris, I'm sure it was similar with yours to where you were just punished and there was never really a discussion about the why. It was just, here's the punishment, and that's the punishment because I'm the parent, and I said so. I always heard, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. It's just like, oh, really? Yeah. And refer back to number two, because I said so. Uh Right. You know, that's that's the thing. Chris, anything else? Uh, Nope, that'll do. All right, thank you very much for the call. And, of course, your calls, welcome, whether it be on the ways that we're teaching our children socialist ideas and one of those through unnecessary force the others because i said so that being teaching blind obedience and forcing your children to share 
not just you know telling your kids that hey you know it, it might be nice if you did this but forcing them and saying, no, little Johnny, you must let Timmy play with your toy. And Danica, I think there's a little bit more on number three, which is unnecessary force before we continue with the list. The solution basically says that there are natural consequences to every action we take. As parents, we should try to mimic these natural consequences. If Johnny hits his sister, then he's not allowed to play with her. This is a natural consequence. This way, children will grow up to become more sensitive to injustices in the world. Now, as I mean, as far as pu- using punishment for your children, I mean, I you know, I'm certainly not a parent, and I would never tell anyone how they should punish their children. Obviously, I don't advocate spanking. I think spanking is way more damaging than it does help. I, I would just I would encourage parents to try and find some way that doesn't use force. You know forbidding Johnny from playing with his sister. I mean, how long would said punishment go? Or if Johnny hits his sister, he's not allowed to, you know, be on the internet for the rest of the night, like take away his laptop or, you know, tell him what he did is bad. And this is why, this is why he hurt his sister. L- like the point he's trying to make, they'll become more sensitive to injustices. Johnny will be like, oh, wow, I didn't realize all these things that could happen from hitting my sister. I won't, I will do my best not to do that. Yeah, and one of the things that I've seen that is kind of a creative punishment, and this was definitely not something that happened when I was a kid, is parents that are getting, you know, large shirts, like, you know, one of dad's shirts or whatever, and writing on there, our get-along shirt. And if the kids are having a disagreement, they have to, together, wear the shirt, wear the shirt Oh, and they are allowed to take the shirt off after they have gotten along for a period of time. So most yeah, of the I've time, I think too. it's like five minutes. So as long as you two aren't arguing for five minutes, then you can take the shirt off. Is this both kids in the same shirt? At the same time. At the yes. same time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that would, and, that and would generally resolve like, things. <laughs> you know, they, these are like you know five to seven year old kids, so we're not talking about like two teenagers yeah, that wearing right. these are one of kids. your shirts. These are you know like younger kids. Okay, well, yeah, that is creative. Um, and, and they each get one armhole that they get to use. Like both both of their heads are coming out of the neck hole. They so each basically, get one it looks arm. like a miniature ogre. That's what we're trying to go for—a miniature two-headed ogre. Yeah, but I think the thing with punishment, and I didn't see where it's really touched on here, is all of these are still based on the threat of force. You know, what happens if you don't do your time out? What happens if you don't stay in your room? You know, the kids, I think, are naturally going to assume that something worse is going to happen. Right. That is the threat that's always happening. Well, and I, I think the threat of, say, taking away something that they like. You know, if they like to play outdoors, well, they can't go outside for a state or they're okay, grounded. Okay, so what for happens two weeks. if they go outside? What happens if they sneak out of the house when they're grounded? What happens if they use the internet when you say you can't use the internet for a week? Okay, well, you know, again, I would never tell what kind of punishments that a parent should do for their kids, but obviously right, I, the that, parent that, should that's use. That's not what, what they... I was asking, but. That's, you're just going to have to think of right, other so ways th- to... There's implied, if you don't abide by the punishment that I've given you now, something else will happen. Well, then you've just got a really problematic child on your hands, and there's <laughs> got to be, you know, you just might have to go a little bit... Not but saying like that, using that's, force, but that, That's just the same something. thing with, you know, governments, Every. where they give you a ticket. You don't pay the ticket. You've got to go well, to court. I, you don't go right. to court. I encourage parents to They just... arrest you... If their best you judgment. resist arrest, then they will probably kill you. So, you know, on that Morbid level, you, you can say that the punishment for everything is death. This is Free Talk Are Live. Are you suffering with hearing loss? Are you sick of people constantly complaining that your TV is too loud? Are you tired of asking people to speak up? Would you like to hear more clearly, but you don't want to wear a hearing aid that makes you look old? Then you need to try Listen Clear a life-changing breakthrough precisely designed by top audio engineers to fit your ear almost invisibly. And you can adjust Listen Clear to find the perfect way to hear everything, wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And right now, you can try Listen Clear absolutely risk-free with free shipping. We'll even give you free batteries for life. So call now, 1-800-940-5957. Listen Clear is lightweight and completely hassle-free, and it's practically invisible. Call for your 100% risk-free home trial with free shipping and free batteries for life. For free information, call now. 
1-800-940-5957. That's 1-800-940-5957. 1-800-940-5957. Hi, John Hubner from Midas Resources. Are you tired of watching your hard-earned assets dwindle away? As government spending is out of hand and the Federal Reserve is creating in excess of $20 billion a week, are you tired of stockbrokers gambling away your hard-earned money? Is this market a setup for a crash greater than 1987? Too many of today's policies resemble those that led to the collapse of 1929. <laughs> This is John Hubner, and that was me in 2007. And we all know what happened when the subprime credit bubble burst. By March 2009, the dollar lost 50% of its value. The entire U.S. banking system was on the verge of collapsing. Like all financial problems of the past, is history about to repeat itself? Call me, John Hubner, at 1-800-686-2237, extension 129, before it's too late to protect yourself. Will the oncoming catastrophe take all private IRAs, 401ks with it? There is a way to protect your hard-earned assets. Call me, John Hubner, at one 800 686 2237 extension 129. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state of the art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at cato.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're going through a list of six ways that parents are teaching their children socialist ideas. The first on the list is forced sharing. The second on the list is teaching blind obedience. The third on the list is unnecessary force. And we'll go through the remaining three in just a moment. But you need to protect yourself online. Your internet service provider is likely saving your surfing history. Criminals might be sniffing your Wi-Fi packets. Governments and corporations are limiting what you can see on the internet, not to mention the NSA sweeping up metadata, even though they've said that they might be stopping that, maybe. But yeah, they're probably still doing it. ProXPN can solve all of that. Simply download an app for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android. Even Linux, but the setup there is just a little bit different. Then just connect to the internet and you are protected from all of that. No more prying, no more spying. One account works for all of your de- one account works for all of your devices. No need to have a separate account for each device. 
Just go to proxpn.com slash FTL, and you will get 50% off the regular monthly price. FTL 50, that's almost $5 a month. That's for the lifetime of the account, no matter which premium account you go with. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth with servers all around the world to access, the ability to privately torrent, get past regionally blocked websites, and this is important, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. You get all of that with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL, use promo code FTL50, and get a great discount on privacy that is priceless. All right. Number four, managing play. In a socialist society, there is one business that supplies one product. Competition is restricted because it promotes profits. Therefore, schools determine how a child can best serve the community. Then the child is put in that occupation. This is becoming more accepted because parents are managing a child's play or traditional free time. A school-aged child wakes up and they go to school for eight hours. At school, they are told what to read, what to watch, and what to study. Then they go to sports practice where they are told how to play. Then we wonder why they sit around bored all the time. They are never given the opportunity opportunity to explore their own decisions you know this is something that is kind of interesting i was talking to somebody a couple days ago i forget who it was but they were telling me that like you know the power was out at their house or something and they told the kids well go outside and play well what are we supposed to play like what what, what do you mean go outside and play like do what do what yeah they they had outside. no clue how to just go outside and play. Like I, I remember when I was a kid where we would just all get together and like play, like ride bikes through the woods. We'd ride bikes. We'd Something would happen. Something pick would... up a stick and a dirt ball and just like start hitting dirt go balls Go to the with park sticks. and play in the sand or play street hockey. I mean, I can think of numerous ways that we played outside. No, you must be from up north playing street hockey. We'd play football in the middle of the no, street. No, this was in the Midwest. And we played street hockey. <laughs> okay, well, when I say north, somewhere that gets snow. No, we were playing street hockey like in the summer. Like we would get rollerblades and we get hockey right. sticks and hit a tennis ball on the ground. Right, but what what I'm saying is you're from somewhere where hockey is a normal winter activity. I, no, I, I was think, actually born in Southern California. That's not where <laughs> hockey came from. I think Daryl's confusing you're from geography. Idaho. You're confusing geography. I lived geography. in Idaho the majority of my life. Yeah, yes, but I was born in Idaho. I was okay. I did not. I have not played any street hockey in Idaho. The majority okay. of my street hockey experience was in South Dakota. Remember, I, I've lived all over the United States, South too. Dakota, it also snows a lot. Sure. We don't really play hockey there. We mostly ski, but whatever works. Okay. Well, South Dakota, there there are several colleges in South Dakota that have really good hockey teams. So, like, hockey is a thing in South Dakota. Hockey is a uh, thing Hockey is not really a lot much of, of a thing in Alabama. Okay. So you've like, heard of hockey though, so right, I have. Anyone that has semi decent weather can play street hockey, Daryl. You are just stereotyping people based on geography. I, right? I, Seriously, and I think right, this but, is a generational question. Street hockey is more of a modern thing, something someone a uh, millennial or a Gen Xer might bring up, but we never played street hockey when I was a kid. Okay, I mean, no, we, street we hockey was something in the nineties. Football and, in the middle of the street. Okay, well there you go. You know, you're still playing a sport in the street. Right. You know, I, you know I, in majority of places I lived, it was you know suburban area, so there weren't really fast going cars, and for the most part, it was pretty safe. Oh, there's a car coming! Quick, move out of the way. The car comes by. We resume. That's yeah. just what it was. Yeah, and for the majority of my childhood, we lived at the end of a dead end street. There you so, go. So, like, if any cars were coming up, then if they were that far up the road. It was probably one of the neighbors that was trying to get in their driveway. Sure. Well, in my town, had about three streets, so. Yeah, and typically when we, when you played outside, you were able to play until the you know the street lights came on, and it was time to go home. Yeah, that's just how it was. But that, that's crazy that those kids just had no idea how to play outside. Yeah, uh, like wow, no clue. Like what, what what do we play? Like you know what what are the rules? How how do we do it? Well, oh but back to the article. How though. do I, I play? Mean, yeah, the the thing is, and what I got out of that was, our kids are so so much of their time is is regimented already because now you know school 
and they've talked about extending school hours and things like that. We encourage them to get involved in after school activities, which keeps them in that same thing. And then, you know, um, and then you've got kids that are getting home at, you know, in time for dinner. And then after dinner, it's time for homework and they don't have that time. You see some kids and sometimes it's the parents encouraging, sometimes it's school and sometimes it's the kid, but you know, who's involved in two or three activities at a time, the kid has no time left for himself. And, and that's a challenge. And God forbid, if your kid, you know, isn't involved in those things, then he's going to be chastised. You're going to be sure. Why, why isn't your kid playing soccer? Why and, is he not being, you know, a productive member of society right. by, you know, pitching in on the soccer team so that everyone can come and enjoy wa- watching him play? The the whole thing about homework, it's one of these things that subconsciously you're teaching the uh, student that school is not the place to actually do the learning. We're, we're going to tell you a bunch of things, but here's assignments. Take this home with you. You you now have to take your work home the re- so that when you wind up getting an actual job, then you're expected to be working from the time you wake up till the time you go to bed, whether it's doing your job during that nine to five or whether it's, you know, you're having to take work home with you and do some homework for your job, like you're expected to be productive all day long. There is no relaxation. Right. I think the other part of that is, is there's such a focus in public schools anyway on standardized testing that perhaps most of their time in school is spent studying up for the standardized testing. And, oh, yeah, we do have a curriculum we got to get through too. do that at home after soccer, after dinner. Yeah. And when you take the test, you can't use your book. Because, you know, God forbid, in the real world, if somebody asks you a question, you don't actually have this thing called the Internet where you get to look up answers. Your thoughts on this or more 855-450 free. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. How many good people procrastinate? When was the last time you updated your last will and testament, your living will, and your health care power of attorney? If you could get these documents included with your Legal Shield membership for no additional charge, wouldn't it just make sense to have the peace of mind of owning a Legal Shield membership? Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Last night's Victoria's Secret fashion show was a true ratings winner, particularly with men who don't know that actual pornography exists. The angels' feather costumes and silk nightgowns were a hit with 30 to 35 year old male viewers who had no idea that nude images of all the models are easily accessible on the internet. And the show did equally well with 10 to 12 and a half year old boys who are going to have their minds blown when they finally get around their parents' internet blockers. CBS executives are touting the broadcast as breakthrough programming for people who are excited by the tops of boobs. Producer Dave Mitchell told Variety, quote, The $2.5 million fantasy bra is a big draw with women who shop at Victoria's Secret and an even bigger draw with men who've never seen or heard about sex before. The runway show drew expected outrage from the Christian Family Research Council. Executive Director Kathy Rouse charged that the event degrades women by objectifying them, most likely because she's never seen a Ukrainian prostitute receive a bukkake shower from a gang of cracked-out Albanian teens. This is the Onion News Network. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever is on your mind. We've been going through a list of six ways that parents are teaching their children socialist ideas. We've made it through three and a half. We're on item number four, which is basically regimented play or managed play. We'll get back to this in just a minute. And the we in studio tonight is Daryl. Chris Reitman. And Danica. And before we take your calls, I want to make sure that I tell you about SpendBitcoins.com. It's one of the oldest and largest Bitcoin merchant directories, and it's for sale. Over 10,000 Bitcoin accepting merchants listed. They have over 3 million page views since their inception. And one of the number one Google search terms is where can I spend Bitcoins? Sell Bitcoin, sell ads, sell premium listings. The world is your oyster with SpendBitcoins.com. That's SpendBitcoins.com slash sell. To the phones, we've got Rob calling from Hamilton, Ontario. Wants to talk about politics. Rob, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Oh, yeah. Hi. I was just wanting, I was phoning about the upcoming election. The one specifically coming up in, in uh, Canada which also I noticed that the states, there's a, the same party that I found recently, that's the one I'll be in, is called the Libertarian Party. Yes, and, and I, I, I understand that there's right now about, what, 60, 70 candidates for the uh, House of Parliament there that are running as you're libertarians? Really, you're really good. It's actually over 80 now or 90, but 60, I think— or 70 have posted pictures on the internet of themselves, and then I'm on there too. But they're, 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 from what I hear, there's more enrolled that just haven't put their pictures up. Great. Nice. Wow, cool. And a couple yeah. of those, I, I just real quick, Rob, I, I just want to point out that a couple of the people that are running are running because of me. I was on Anarchast with Jeff Berwick a couple of months ago. And then it was about wow. two weeks after he had me on that he made his announcement that he was running for parliament in Canada. And yep. he specifically mentioned me as someone who helped sort of influence his decision. And several people have cited Jeff as their reason for running, which means that they're sort of my political grandchild trickle down libertarianism yeah, it's the trickle down sort of thing so rob what, what else do you have to add here well you know what i wouldn't be surprised because now that i think about it it was steve forbes that put me through to you guys because i'm actually running he's not 
he sort of likes my my platform really good. But I was just I'm more interested too that I've been watching a lot of Bill Maher now, and he's been talking. And at one point, he wanted the libertarians up in the states because you got Rand Paul up there, who's becoming extremely popular. Rand Paul still- is becoming popular, but he is by no means a libertarian. He is solidly a Republican. Uh, he will even say, like, I'm not a libertarian. I'm a libertarian Republican. He also uses the term constitutional conservative. <laughs> the media loves to throw the L word around when they describe Rand. But Rand Paul is absolutely not a member of the Libertarian Party. He is a Republican, and I hope that he stays there because I don't want him ruining the Libertarian name any more than he already has. I think it's safe. Everyone... I was going to yeah, say, I think it's safe to say that he's a Republican with Libertarian ideals. Uh, a few of them. I know. This is a sensitive point with Daryl. So, Rob, <laughs> it... Rob, what's on your mind? Well, no, I agree with what you just said about Rand Paul. Um, I hear that all the time. I, that's what Bill Maher backed off of him over. Um, but I'm still saying he's popular in Canada because he's he might not be libertarian. He might be faking being Republican. You don't know. But he, he's driving up the votes for us in Canada. Even though, like, you know how, for instance, you could have someone running. Like, a lot of people have done it. They, they'll sort of run and they popularize another party because... I, up in Canada, his name's been known because of Ron Paul as a libertarian name, right. and it's becoming popular now in Canada. So you always associate it with the most famous name out there. Sure. And, but a lot of people have told me that he's not he is a Republican. Everyone says that. Yeah. So when are the elections there in Canada? 19th of October. Okay. So I, I thought they were a little closer because I know that in Canada and the UK, they have these fairly short election cycles to where here in the U.S., you know, the presidential election is 15 months away and they're getting ready for the first Republican Party presidential debate. So we have right. incredibly long election cycles to where it seems like, you know, the next election cycle is ending before the first one even ends. Yep. So, Rob, good it luck to long. you. Good luck to the other libertarians up there. Anything else to add real quick? Well, I just like the analogy that's starting to be drawn up. There's become a, a, a likeness now, like a more closeness between now Canada and the States through this party. And I was just going to add that I wanted to see it more popularized like it's becoming because I learned about it in the States. But I'm, I'm proud of getting this airtime in because I might phone in every now and then as our campaigning gets closer to election time. Because I know your name or whoever from your station came up on our, our, uh, in our website. Oh, nice. And cool. what is it, what is that website real quick? It's what, lp.ca? Yeah, you've got several of them. Like there's going to be the, well, the two um, big blog sites would be Libertarians in Canada, and then you've got the Ontario Libertarians. But then you've also got um, the Libertarian CDN Road to 2015, which is a very closed one. And you're coming up even on the Libertarians Uncensored. So there's three main ones, Libertarians Uncensored, Libertarians in uh, in in uh, Canada and Ontario uh, Libertarians. Good luck to you and the other Libertarians up there in Canada, Rob, and thank you for the call. And just one thing to point out real quick, the reason that it's so easy relatively for people in Canada to just decide, I want to run for parliament and so far, they've recruited over 80 candidates to run for parliament as libertarians. One reason it's so easy is because every candidate in Canada and in the UK, they have the same requirements to get on the ballot. They collect a very minute amount of signatures. It's either 15 or 50. Oh, wow. And then they pay a fairly small refundable deposit that if they get over a certain vote threshold, they get that money back. And here in the U.S., depending on where you live, the number of signatures that you need is anywhere from a couple hundred to a couple thousand. Mm -hmm. Uh, Depending on which party you're running as, you might have to just pay a small filing fee. You might have to pay a large filing fee and collect a large number of signatures. And I'm actually glad that we got to sort of delve into the whole ballot access thing 
because Chris, this gives us a chance to talk a little bit more about your run for sheriff, where you in Cheshire County, New Hampshire, you had to collect 150 valid signatures and you ran into a couple of problems and sort of delve into that yeah. just briefly. And it is based on the population, so it came out to be 150 I would need to run for this particular county office. Right, and actually in New Hampshire, county office, it's the same regardless of the population of the county. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember exactly how that works, but in the end... Because the, the, they the, put a number in statute that says if you're running for this office, it's this many signatures. Right. So the long and the short of it was um, you go out there and you hit the streets and you ask people to sign um, petitioning papers that will, they're in essence petitioning you to get on the ballot. And if you get enough of those, if you break the 150 mark, then you should be able to go to the secretary of state who will then certify it and say, okay, you're allowed to be on the ballot and you can run for this office. So it's a whole lot of hoops to go through. The The real issue becomes um, we collected, I think, 170, 175 signatures, something like that. We had a little bit of a buffer there. But then it has to be certified at each town. So all the people that live in the city of Keene or in the town of Alstead, they have to be certified by the local groups. And those local groups sometimes don't want to see more people on the ballot and they will disqualify them for all sorts of reasons. Like oh, wow. this signature doesn't look exactly right. <laughs> In my case, they disqualified myself. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial. The fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to OneSilverSolution.com. OneSilverSolution.com. There is only one silver solution. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Still time for your calls if you call in right now. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In studio tonight, it's Daryl, Chris Reitman, and Danica. And Chris, let's just real quick sort of uh, wrap up about your sheriff's run. So you collected about 170, 180 signatures. You needed 150 valid. Yeah. And your own signature was invalidated for some weird reason. Because the local election officials in my town didn't think that I should be allowed to do that. And they were pretty sure it was against the law. So it got removed from the stack in wow. uh, the city of Keene. It was a whole lot of ones that we didn't recognize uh, this signature. This doesn't look exactly right. Keep in mind, people are scribbling in the middle of a street on Holding a clipboard. Holding onto a clipboard. Yeah, it was really, really interesting there. And then we had some where uh, people had moved from one location to another. We had found... That they are indeed the same person, but the the city wouldn't invalidate them. The city of Keene did more to shut down my campaign than anybody else. If it hadn't been for them, I would have ended up being on the ballot. And then there was another municipality that just completely rejected. They said, we're not even going to look at these <laughs> yeah. because we were not here during the time that the state law says we must be here yeah. to accept these papers and because we screwed up and you left these on our doorstep, we're not accepting them as valid. Even though one of the towns where nobody was there, I used a thumbtack and put it on their community bulletin board right next to a thing about like a community picnic. That one was validated. That that got counted. Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. Um, and it was just a whole variety of things. And it's sort of the death by a thousand paper cuts. Um, you lose one here, you lose one there, and pretty soon, and, and Keene, it was literally, I think, almost a third of theirs they rejected just for one reason or, or another. What, and what in would, the end, you were, what, 20 signatures short? Something like that. We went uh, before the Election Law Commission uh, down in Concord and, you know, with the Secretary of State there who's in charge of these elections. And despite Don't the fact— Don't even get me started yeah, on the Secretary won't. of State. But the, the, the thing that killed me was is even though we were able to show and document these violations of election law, where election officials violated their own laws, that didn't matter. The only thing that mattered was, okay, if we said all these things, if, if you can show me enough signatures that were denied or this or that to make a difference, then we'll let you run for office. And it was it was just insane. Now, and then the Secretary of State, just to wrap this up real quick, Secretary of State was asked his opinion by the Ballot <laughs> Law Commission, and he said, it's too easy to run for office as anything other than a Republican or a Democrat. We need to make it more difficult. Now, let, let me just, for people that aren't aware of New Hampshire election law, if you run as a Republican or Democrat for a state rep office, it's $2. If you run for county whatever, it's $10. Very easy. 
about three quarters of the people that ran for sheriff as either a Republican or Democrat somewhere in the state had absolutely no primary competition, meaning they were automatically on the general election ballot. About 60% of state rep candidates had no primary opposition, meaning they were automatically on the general election ballot. But yet you have to show some modicum of support that's an arbitrary number that we pulled out of our butts in 1979. <laughs> you so, got it. Yeah, and this is why I fight for ballot access reform, because there should be a level playing field. And let's get back, Danica, in these remaining moments to the six ways that we teach our children socialist ideals. And surprisingly, on this list, one of them is not that they have elections with absolutely no choice. Imagine that. (laughs) All right. So the last point you're talking about was managing play, Uh, talking about how a child's daily schedule is just pretty much comprised of school after school activities dinner sometimes homework leaving no general free time for them to do whatever the what they want solution to this is to give the child more freedom let them decide what they want to learn let them decide what they want to play let them explore their curiosity as a child grows in this freedom so will their learning potential children naturally will want to take responsibility of their time and i and I totally agree. I mean, it's one thing if a child says, yes, I actively want to be in the school debate club. Like if they're really, Oh, I love debate club. Yeah. You know, it, no. you know if a child really, you know, that's fine. But, you, you know, they need time to just decompress, play a video game, read a read a fun book, not just, you know, a great literature book or a textbook, but just a fun book. So I, encyclopedia, like I, I should not have just sat down and read encyclopedias as I, a child. I have a brother that did that too. You can do that if that's something that you want to do, but if they want to read a fun book, then let them read a fun book. Well, All right, so I, let's jump to, well, real quick, what, what were you going to say? Before no, I was just going to say, um, it's been a lot of talk in business and stuff like that over the last several years is playing to people's strengths. We want to find out where people do well and by allowing kids to spend their free time doing things that they enjoy right. and that they're going to get good at that's playing to strengths and i if think they it's want, great yeah if they want to read a textbook about botany certainly maybe you know that's something that they're really interested in it you know even though it's educational they might be interested in it just let them They'll have grow some, weed there you go <laughs> let them explore what they want to do all right so on to number five on to five chores without compensation Many children are given weekly and daily chores with no compensation. Some parents say they pay their children with rent and food. It is not true because if the child does not do the chore, then the parent will still provide the rent and food. This reinforces socialistic values that no matter what you do, you will be provided housing and food. And this is, you know, this is a good point because it's just like, yeah, you know, the parent will likely not kick the child out. You know, I'm sure there have been crazy instances where that's happened, but for the most part, if the child doesn't do the chore or does it really poorly, they're still going to have a roof over their head. They're still going to be fed. Uh, now, this the solution to this is really interesting, and I, I think it's a great way to drive a point. Teach your child how to make a deal. Chores should resemble work, and with work, there's compensation. This does not mean that your child should be given a weekly allowance. It simply means that there should be a trade for their work and time. Teaching them their work and time have value is good for their work ethic. And I like this because you don't necessarily need to reinforce daily chores with, say, like monetary value. Because I agree that children should be doing chores simply because they should help around the household. But if they're doing a chore that is not necessarily common, let's say, for example. Clean the gutters. Clean the gutters, raking the leaves, something that only happens a couple times each year. If they, you know, if they do a chore that is out of the realm, they should be, you know, maybe you want to add money there, but you can also throw in other incentives. Hey, I'll take you to Disneyland or I'll take you to the movie, something like that. If they, you know, when they do their regular chores, you can reward them saying, okay, for every dish you wash, you'll get an extra whatever amount of time to play on the computer. Or for every time you take out the trash, you get an extra hour playing video games or doing something that you want. So this is a nice way of, you know, gently reinforcing the importance and the value of doing chores. And, you know, I have to admit that I was incorrect in a statement that I made a couple of minutes ago saying that one of the things on here uh, about teaching children socialism was elections with no choice. Well, number six is no options. Yeah. 
So an interesting thing is Bernie Sanders, a socialist president nominee, recently said that there should be one kind of deodorant. Really stupid. Now, I, I have a grammatical issue with Oh, yeah, this the, sentence. some of the stuff is really grammatical. Yeah. The word terrible. socialist here should not be capitalized. Yeah. True, Bernie Sanders has said that he's a socialist. But when you capitalize the name of a party, you are signifying membership within that party. Right. Uh, Bernie Sanders, as far as I know, is not an actual member of the Socialist Party. Correct. The Socialist Party has not endorsed Bernie Sanders. The Progressive Party of Vermont has endorsed his presidential campaign. So from a purely grammatical standpoint, the S here should not be capitalized and continue. Right. In a socialist society, there is no choice. Parents who do not give their children options are reinforcing the value that the authority knows what is best for the individual and that the children should rely on for them for that decision. Now, the solution for this is to give your children the freedom of choice. When they eat breakfast, let them choose what they're eating. When planning a vacation or going out to eat, allow the child to have a democratic voice in the decision making. This allows the children how to make how to have an opinion and how to defend it. By consistently allowing your child choice, they will learn the value of freedom, what they want in life, and how to get it. All right. So let, let me just throw in something here where it says, teach your children to have a democratic voice. All right, Danica, me and Chris have decided that we're going to the beach. We don't care that you want to go to the mountains. We outvoted you. That's democracy. <laughs> yeah, that's that's wonderful. Not yeah. without its pitfalls. Sure. Something else that's not democratic, that would be Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live, it's free for you. You can find all of the archives for free at freetalklive.com. And, of course, we are live every day of the week from 7 to 10 Eastern. Freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima 